Here's a photo of the dog patch with some of the spots where I dug up the gold marked with gold. Here's some of the gold from the dog patch that I had left after selling several bits to some tourists who were passing through. The five grammar on the chain came from a different place and I kept that for Aileen. Some more small bits from the same gully but on the other side of the gully. This is a map of Dunolly in central Victoria and shows the nearby Munster Gully where I found a nice little patch of some 16 small nuggets for a total of one and a half ounces. It was in an area that had been pretty well done over by other prospectors but they just missed finding this particular spot. This is what's regarded as Victoria's Golden Triangle and the general area where we spent three months caravan camping at several different gold fields. Occasionally we'd go to a caravan park in Dunolly or Mariborra for a night or two to do our laundry and to restock our pantry but for the most part we camped right close to the area where we were prospecting. This bee swarm moved in the next day, just six feet away from our van. Just after we got to Clay Gully, we had 40 points of rain which made the little creek run. The bridge was formed by using an old uh, boiler from a eucalyptus still, an occupation that used to be common in the area. This was a giant box tree near our campsite. There were a couple of them there, they were really big. This is another little patch of gold I found. Around about where that heap of grass is heaped up in the middle, that's where I found it. And I've raked the area around that to get closer to the ground and see if there's any more. Then what I'll do, I'll go out in ever widening circles until I've done the whole area. After you've found a couple of nuggets in any one area, good idea to clear the spot and rake it so that you can get your detector real close to the ground. This is one area uh, of Rusty's Patch that I raked. And here's another part of Rusty's Patch. We were on a very gentle slope running down to a small gutter with the old diggings on the other side of the gutter. After you've finished uh, thoroughly detecting each raked area, it's a good idea, in fact it's law, to spread the sticks and leaf material back over the ground, like I've done here. It also tends to hide the fact that there was gold found there. Here's Aileen and myself relaxing with Graham and Nola on the right, and Rusty too with the ball in his mouth. Rusty's waiting patiently for a bit of buttered toast for his brekkie. We disturbed this big old man, Goanna, when we moved in. He was all a five foot long. Rusty found him and put him up this iron bark. At the head of Jericho Lead was Brown's Reef, probably the source of the gold for the lead. This was the dump uh, from the mine shaft. Here's an open cut mine, the Prince of Wales Reef. This is the remains of a puddler. The circular trench was originally faced or lined with boards. A large post in the centre, a horse pushing the bar around the outer rim, with the paddle stirring up the washed dirt in the trench. The gold sinks to the bottom and the dirt overflows into a drain back into the dam while more water runs in. Puddlers were always considered a good source of detector gold, which was a pity because they've all been virtually destroyed. This is a well-built and fairly well-preserved mud hut close to the original Maxwell Reef. That's a dummy in the window. It fooled me at first. Another mud hut, but one that's been fairly vandalised over the years. These huts were built in the early 1900s. 
the uh, sign says it all here. I typed this up so you could read it. This is where Captain Melville was supposed to pen his horse up. Apparently the cave that he lived in was a bit lower down the hill. It had a few escape routes for him. We checked out the big quartz on the south side of Maryborough. You nearly always find quartz near gold, but not always find gold where there's quartz. Here's some more gold from different places. The big piece was just over one and a half ounce or 78 gram and the smallest bit was a half a gram. You don't always find gold. You always find a lot of other muck as well. Here's a lot of brass and bullets etc. But add to this lot all the rusty nails you find as well. That's where Rusty got his name from. Graham got this bit from a place that I had high hopes for, but never much luck. It was Mormon's Gully. I thought I'd just tease you a bit. This was found in Western Australia last year, it's 2010, and it weighed 20 kg, worth about 1 million in those days.